Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. From Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Temporary power solutions provider Agreco has officially launched phase two of its cross-border interim power project at Gigawatt Park in Rosano Garcia, Mozambique. Samantha Mulman has the story. Having signed a power purchase agreement with Namibian power utility NAM Power in March, Agreco had Mozambique Energy Minister Salvador Namboretti unveil the $200 million expansion project, which now adds 122 megawatts of capacity to the original gas-fired facility. The plant now generates 232 megawatts of power to Mozambique, South Africa and Namibia's respective power utilities. Speaking at the inauguration ceremony, NAM Power MD Paulina Shilamba expressed his gratitude that the negotiations between NAM Power and Agreco, which started last year, had officially borne fruit. The SADC region is facing a shortage of power and this situation will prevail for the next three to four years. In Namibia, the power supply deficit and associated challenges will continue until the commissioning of a new base load power station in 2018. Given the unavailability of power, utilities in the region, including NAM Power, are working on a number of generation and transmission projects to try and meet the ever-increasing demand for power supply. NAMPOWER initiated the Short-Term Critical Supply Project, or STCS, under which a number of short- and medium-term initiatives will be implemented to address the immediate power supply shortages. The purchase agreement, such as the one between NAMPOWER and AGRECO, forms part of our STCS program. As part of the STC program, NAMPA will continue negotiating new purchase agreements with neighboring utilities and independent power producers, while at the same time renegotiating existing agreements. This project is a triumph of our STCS program, and its inauguration here today marks an important milestone in the development of the Namibian power sector. Of the 122 megawatts generated through phase two of the project, NAM Power will now receive 90 megawatts of mid-merit power, with the remaining 32 megawatts reserved for Mozambique Power Utility EDM. This adds to the 15 megawatts of power that EDM already receives from phase one of the project, which provides South Africa's power utility ESCOM with 92.5 megawatts. The expansion makes Rosano Garcia the world's largest cross-border interim power plant. Agreco Europe Middle East and Africa Regional MD David Taylor-Smith explains the significance of the project as a whole. Phase one had lots of unique features, so it was the time taken to build the what was then 110 megawatt power station, build a substation, build three kilometers of transmission lines. Uh, that took 29 weeks, so that was a record. Uh, you know, no one's ever done it that quickly. The other thing that was unique was taking gas from Mozambique and then using it to generate power across border, which for an interim power solution is unique at the time. Uh, and obviously we've extended it today to one other country, so it's now tripartite. The Rosano Garcia plant is strategically placed on the border between Mozambique and South Africa, which enables Agreco to feed power to up to nine different countries, opening up the possibility for further expansion. Agreco Southern and East Africa MD James Shepard spoke to Engineering News about the future of the gas-fired power plant. We have uh, the two phases, taking us 250 megawatts a day. Um, we have the capability to go to 400 megawatts. Um, we are in negotiations with other utilities and various utilities run around the Southern African Power Pool to expand the plant further. Um, and I would hope by the end of this year, um, we'll be in a position to, to announce further expansion of the plant. It's a fantastic project. I think, you know, you, you look at the co cooperation between three countries uh, um, and a private uh, company, although Greco is a public company in the UK, um, 
private uh, IPP uh, producer, and it shows what can be really achieved when you know people put their head together and uh, make a commitment to do the right thing and to um, use the natural resources in Africa. Other news making headlines this week. Sassel unveils Project 2050 SA investment plan amid disinvestment claims. Partnerships and new thinking are needed for regenerative city plans to prevail. And Louisiana extends $1 billion in incentives for Sassel investments. Sassel CEO David Constable has unveiled plans for Project 2050, an initiative which he says is designed to sustain and expand the company's integrated value chain in southern Africa until at least the middle of the century. On Project 2050, yeah, that's a great message. To uh, What we need to do is find more feedstock, obviously. We need to uh, access more coal and more natural gas here in southern Africa, most likely in Mozambique and, and hopefully here in South Africa as well to, uh, to make sure we can run our entire integrated value chain uh, in southern Africa out till 2050. And what that means is a, a lot more investment uh, probably equal or greater than than what we're spending uh, spending uh, over in North America over the next decade. So, uh, Project 2050 is an exciting thing for us, and and uh, again, once we get that story understood by all stakeholders, then uh, then we'll be in a better place. Strong consensus emerged at a recent infrastructure dialogues gathering last month that a combination of behavioural change and partnerships between the private sector, civil society and government is needed in order for city-level regenerative initiatives to have any chance of success. The reason a carbon tax won't work, but an emissions cap will work in the country, we believe, is two things. One, 60% of the emissions in the country come from ESKIM, which is a regulated entity. And the way to change Eskom's energy mix is not through a carbon tax, it's through the IRP. So government can decree tomorrow that no more coal stations will be built and nuclear or renewables will be built. Um, it doesn't need an artificial price to make the model select different, uh, different options. In fact, what our modelling has shown, that even if you introduce the carbon tax at the levels that it is, the, the traditional models will continue to, to, to pick coal generation because the carbon price needs to be significantly higher, much, much higher than Treasury's mooted, for it even to make a, a slight difference. South African Energy and Chemicals Group Sassel has secured investment incentives collectively valued at around $1 billion from the state of Louisiana in the U.S. to support its proposed development of an ethane cracker and a gas-to-liquids facility in the Lake Charles area. We are pursuing two projects in the U.S. The first one is an ethane cracker and downstream derivatives uh, comprising uh, polyethylene, alcohols, uh, ethylene oxide and a number of other high value add derivatives. Uh, this project is anticipated to cost between five and seven billion U.S. dollars. So it is a very large project, one and a half million ton per annum ethane cracker. And we anticipate that we will have that up and running uh, by the end of 2017 and that is a great opportunity for us uh, based essentially on the abundance of ethane which is associated with the production of natural gas through fracking and that has put I think the, um, the ethylene cracker industry in the US at the very low end of the cost curve. The only place in the world where you can get cheaper ethane is in the Middle East so it's a, it's a great opportunity for us. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.